Okay, um, this is Zheng Tongxie uh, from Southampton. Dr. Vladimir Fuka is with me. He is going to uh, give the presentation. But before, uh, I only make uh, a few points, two points perhaps. First of all, we, we would like to thank to uh, Archer uh, ECSE to support this project. Uh, without this support, this project is not possible. Secondly, um, this work has been uh, presented in a few conference and workshops. And the previous results from the previous code uh, has been published in a few uh, journal paper, papers, including, including one we just published this year. So we have done some uh, validations already for these uh, uh, results of uh, Vladimir are going to show you. Um, looks like uh, the, <laughs> the uh, quality of, uh, of sound is not really good. So we try to do our best to present the work. Now over to uh, Vladimir. Hello, my name is Vladimir Fuka from the University of Southampton. And I would like to present the results of our ECSC project, uh, Large Simulation Code for City Scale Environments, made within the, within the ECSC framework funded by Archer. And the outline of the talk is uh, first just very few words. What, what, what was the embedded CSE or ECSE? framework in which we did the project, the motivation for our project, then to introduce the code, uh, which was uh, improved within the project, which is called ELMM, uh, the, the targets of the projects and how, how it was organized, and, and then uh, really the, the work and the, the code capabilities we, on which we worked, so some code optimizations and then some uh, results and description of one-way nesting technique and two-way nesting technique and the turbulent inflow generation, which we which we employed also in the in the nesting and. We will finish with some performance tests of the code and, and conclusions. So the ECSE or Embedded CSE is a funding program by Archer, uh, which is used to develop software. And it's intended for implementation of new algorithms, algorithms into existing codes to improve scala scalability of, of the codes to high cores and to enable new science in, in existing codes and also to port existing codes to Archer. And our, our project was funded for one year and and mainly to, to Im improve the scalability and enable new, new science. The motivation for this is is to enable simulations by large simulation on uh, large areas with uh, complex terrain or in the city scale with uh, large structures in the atmosphere like in a convective boundary layer. So we need uh, areas of uh, size, let's say 10 kilometers in which we can simulate a whole city. But we as well need a uh, very high resolution in certain areas, uh, let's say one, one meter to describe, describe the, the flow phenomena which happen in the state canyons and when the air flows around individual buildings. So uh, that, can, that can perhaps be done using nested domains. And uh, we want to still use structured orthogonal grids. They are simple to, Im to implement. The solution is fast using them. You can use higher order discretizations, perhaps. So, 
so the motivation is to enable simulations on these large large areas but also in higher resolution in in certain selected areas the code which was stated in the project is called ELMM, Extended Large Hadron Microscale Model. Previously, it was known as an in-house code uh, CLMM, Charles University Large Hadron Microscale Model, but it was significantly improved and is now open source. It, at the end of this project, it was the, it was the source code repository on Bitbucket was open. The code is in Fortran 2008 written using modern techniques, it is parallel. And it, 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 it was mainly used before for flow and pollution, uh, for, to simulate flow and pollution dispersion around buildings and state canyons in state networks, say smaller areas than, than are intended now. Uh, but also for simulations of stable and convective boundary layer and or the whole general cycle of the atmospheric boundary layer, the, the convective and then stable boundary layer and um, it was also used for uh, simulations of, of a large city center let's say two times two kilometers with project cost is 1006 but in that case it was in a course resolution it, it was not nearly uh, one meter but uh, but around five meters which is not not enough to accurately describe the flow in in detail within the streets. Large simulation is a technique how to simulate time dependent flow of uh, of uh, air or other fluids, and uh, it's based on a filtering technique so we we filter the navier stokes equations we use incompressible navier stokes equations and in that case we simulate the we simulate the the equations on a finite grid and because we can describe only certain certain scales in the in the flow only only eddies of certain size we have to use models how to how to simulate how to model the influence of the small small scales we in this case use a simple eddy viscosity model that means we add another viscosity to our to our equations is the new sgs the eddy viscosity and this viscosity must be modeled by by certain models. There are many many types of models which can be employed, and several of them are implemented in in our code. These the equations which are shown are quite simplified because we also have passive scalars, the fields of temperature or the water vapor also in the model. The numerical methods in the code include. The, uh, the projection method for pressure velocity coupling, which connects the, the continu continuity equation and the momentum equation, the temporal evolution by third order explicit on Kakuta method, uh, second order central differences for special discretization for special derivatives, subgrid models, several of them used, and also immense boundary method to to describe obstacles because we have uniform grid in our code. Very important part of the code is the Poisson solver. It um, because we have to solve a pressure Poisson equation shown shown here. This is an expensive step, but it enables us to use the incompressible number of Stokes equations, which are much much uh, cheaper to use than the fully compressible navier stokes equations there are many methods available for a simulation of, or a solution of uh, 
po the Poisson equations. ELMM uses methods based on fast Fourier transforms, which are very fast, especially on uniform grid. And uh, there is a library called Poise FFT, which is which is uh, part of ELMM. It's it's it has a separate repository, but it, it's a part of ELMM, and it's based on the well-known FFTW library FFT, FFTW library for fast Fourier transforms. It was described in a paper cited here. It allows several types of boundary conditions for for the pseudo pressure variable, and some of, only some of them are used within ELM, but but more are available in in the in the solver. It's written again in Fortran, but uh, bindings for CNC puzzles are available. In use uh, the very common FFTW library, which is available on Archer and in many Linux distributions. And uh, at the start of the project, it was uh, parallel using OpenMP or MPI, but not both at the same time. Uh, and the MPI version, version actually requires another library, which, which uh, brings 2D decomposition to the fast Fourier transforms and thus enables solution with very high CPU numbers. The author of this library demonstrated the scaling up to 262,000 cores on, on BlueGene computer. So the targets of this project were, uh, the, as I said, enabling simulations of city scales with large domain size, but also resolution down to one meter in certain areas. We had two work packages, and one was devoted to optimization and hybrid parallelization of the core to increase the serial performance of the of the code on, on one node, optimizations of the MPI communications, and to implement the hybrid OpenMP MPI parallelism. And second work package was devoted to to implement one way and two way nesting techniques to be able to concentrate with high resolution in certain areas. So in work package one, it was mostly boring technical work of certain subroutines. Uh, mainly it was uh, certain loop, loop optimizations, open MP optimizations with the collapse close and similar techniques. Important optimizations was the MPI exchange of the ghost cells between neighboring processes, because every process is only a part of the grid and always have to exchange the boundary conditions with its neighbors. So this was rewritten using non-blocking MPI communications. And uh, our test shows that on one node on Archer, the speed up was around 20%. And also, the existing OpenMP and MPI parallelization was combined into, a, into the hybrid OpenMP MPI parallelization technique. Uh, this technique should reduce the number of MPI processes and, and also and therefore the number of of messages which have to be sent over the network. Not not the amount of, of uh, data, but the number of messages. OpenMP in FFT, the, the FFT paralyzed by OpenMP only in FFTW is is actually much faster than when it's parallelized by MPI, so this is another motivation. Unfortunately, this introduces one additional level of synchronization because we have we, we then have not only synchronization of the processes in MPI, but we also have synchronization of of OpenMP threads in each process. And also there is this problem that MPI routines can be 
called only from one OpenMP thread at a time. So another synchronization is necessary. In work package two, we like, we are concentrating on domain nesting. This enables high resolution in selected areas, and it's an alternative to unstructured grid, which is common in general purpose CFD code, but brings more complexity in the code and um, it, is it is more it is common in in uh, atmospheric LES models to to use structured grids. The domain nesting is actually very common in weather prediction mo models and climate models, often in a simpler offline fashion, but sometimes also in in a similar form as we use this as we use here. It is much less common in CFD and especially in archery uh, simulation. So in, in uh, one way domain nesting, we have uh, these separate domains, which are, which are separate, um, separate model runs, just really isolated set of processors as in in an ordinary model runs, but these are the sets of processors by communicating with each other and they, the nested domains have modified boundary conditions which are based on the fields from the outer domains. So the fields of outer domains and their tendencies, their, their time derivatives are interpolated on the nested grid boundaries. We have also their buffer regions where matching applied. I will show more later. And the grid in the nested domains is refined by some ratio, which can be an arbitrary integer. This refinement ratio, let's, let's denote it by M. Uh, means that the nested domain has n times final grid on every cell in outer domain we have n times n times as much as many cells in the inner domain and also we have n times time step n time steps in the nested domain for every time step in the outer domain actually the ratio of time steps can be slightly different than the special refinement ratio. We do the interpolations of the outer fields every after every time step of the outer domain. And these the domains use separate MPI communicators and are running on separate processors from the other other domains. The, it's done in a flexible way, so any domain can have an arbitrary number of of the inner domains, and each of the inner domains can again ha have another set of nested inner domains itself. So they can they can uh, form a cas cascade, the, and each domain the domains within each uh, domain again can be flexibly moved to different locations and they can have they can have each each of the domain can have a different refinement ratio and many other parameters and this technique can also be used to set up the turbulent inlet generation the domains can actually do, do not have to light exactly inside the the domain they can they can only overlap by a small part or only share a common boundary. This is an example of usage of the one-way domain nesting technique with a flow around airfoil where we need where we need a high resolution around the airfoil, but also we need a 
large area around it. And you can see in the in the picture that we have those buffer regions around uh, near the top and bottom boundary of the of the nested domain. In these uh, buffer regions, we apply a force which which acts to bring the inner domain solution closer to the outer domain solution to avoid discontinuities where we would have different values in the inner domain and in the outer domain. So we would have discontinuities in the boundary conditions. This is necessary in all, all interfaces where, we, where there can be flow not only inside from the outer domain into the inner domain, but also in the other directions. So we don't have we don't have to have this buffer region in the inlet domain in this specific case. When we use this technique, the, the most common way how to do this is just straightforward uh, interpolation with a small grid uh, refinement ratio, let's say three or less. But we want to be able to use larger, larger numbers, five or even 10. There is a problem because for if, if we, if the finer domain is significantly has a significantly finer grid than the outer domain, then it resolves much smaller scales than the outer scales. So the the flow interpolated from the outer domain into the inner domain is missing certain scales, certain part of the turbulent kinetic energy spectrum. And this uh, missing turbulent energy can be quite significant. It doesn't have to be negligible. And it can affect, affect the the flow in the nested domain. We can see uh, in the in the figure it idealized the difference between the nested and outer domain and the, and the missing part of the of the spectrum. One one way how to treat this is inflow turbulence generation. It's a well established technique to generate synthetic turbulence inflow in LES, usually to, to generate the whole turbulent inflow on the inflow boundary to, to an ordinary large simulation. Uh, simulation, it's based on uh, random numbers and filtering of these, of these numbers to achieve prescribed uh, turbulent kinetic energy, the, the variance of individual fluctuations in individual directions, and also the correlation, special correlations and temporal correlations. That means the, the integral uh, lengths and time scales of the, of the generated turbulence. But here, in our case, we only generate the missing part of the spectrum, that means only the turbulent eddies, which are smaller than the grid of the outer domain. We estimated the, the missing TKE for the outer, outer field, outer, the field which we see on the, on the grid of the outer domain. This, uh, there are other techniques how we can do it. We could also use uh, one equation, kinetic energy, subjective kinetic energy based model and directly use the, the subgrid kinetic energy variable. But this is one of the options how to use, how to approximate this variable. 
we will show uh, the usage of this technique on a test case with one-way nesting in a simple half channel, a simple turbulent boundary layer on on over a rough surface. We have periodic boundary conditions for the outer domain, but the inner domain uses, of course, the nesting boundary conditions. The refinement ratio here is five. The resolution is quite coarse. It because this case is just an illustration. In these animations, you can see first at the top how the inflow of the outer domain almost seamlessly is interpolated on the boundary of the inner domain and enters it, but uh, it's very smooth. At least very significantly smooth in comparison with, with the flow into which the flow itself evolves at the end of this nested domain. And the turbulence generation remove, removes the smoothness. It's shown in the, in the bottom animation. And we artificially introduce small scale fluctuations into the, into the inflow field of the nested domain. And to show, show this even a little bit more detail, we have here the spectra of uh, the U-velocity component, the streamwise velocity component, in three locations close to the inlet, let's say in one third of the domain, and close to the outlet of the inner domain. And you can, you can notice that in the inner domain, the green line is close, very close to the red line. The red line is uh, the spectrum computed from the time series of the of the taken from the flow from the fields from the outer domain coarse grid. And the the green line is taken from the upper, from, from, the, from the domain which was shown in the previous slides on the top, where no turbulence generator is used. And the blue line is uh, from the domain where we used the synthetic turbulence generator. You can see that there is a very big difference in the high end of the spectrum. As we move uh, towards, in the streamwise direction towards the end of the domain, the green line, the green spectrum is coming closer to the blue one. It's naturally developing towards a broader spectrum of turbulence, but it takes significant, significant amount of, of distance to develop. We also developed the two-way nesting techniques for our code. In two-way nesting, we have a feedback of the inner domain on to the outer domain. It's still an area of active research, especially in LES. It is not that clear uh, how exactly it will influence the accuracy of the, especially the outer, outer domain fields. In our code is especially useful when we combine it with, uh, with a scalar dispersion from a scalar source, which is located in the inner domain. Um, it's implemented such that after the momentum equation is solved, 
uh, the uh, after the momentum equation is solved in both domains, the inner domain solution is filtered onto a coarse grid of the outer domain, sent to the outer domain, and the outer domain replaces fields in in its own grid with those values which were received from the inner domain. And then it performs the pressure correction, solves the Poisson equation, and so on. We want to illustrate this technique on uh, one test case, which uh, uses pollution, pollution dispersion, a dangerous gas from a small scalar source. And therefore, we want to have high resolution close to this source to, to be able to accurately compute the dispersion of the gas from the source in very close to the source. But we also want to be able to compute a larger area where, where this uh, dangerous substance can, can be transported. Um, and therefore, we must, we must have a larger domain. In this setup, we tried three domains. Domain two is immersed in domain one. And domain three is nested into domain two. In both cases, the refinement ratio is two. And in both cases, we have the two-way nesting. La in domain one to domain two, and as well in domain two to domain th three, both use the two-way nesting. The test case was adapted from Project DIPLOS, which is funded by EPSRC, where we investigate the, the dispersion of, of uh, scalars from localized sources of in inside street street canyons. So in this case, we used this periodic array of uh, buildings and the periodic conditions in the outer domain for the flow were periodic. Of course, then there were nesting boundary conditions in the in the in the inner domains. The source is located in the center of the innermost domain when the, where the arrow is pointing. And the animation shows concentrations on plane Z equal one half of H, where H is the building height. All buildings have the same height. So this animation is at the half of the height of the buildings. If we wanted to solve the whole domain in the full resolution, which we use in, in the innermost domain, you would need 113 millions of cells. While in this way, we only need in total 2.3 million of cells. So we save a factor of 50. And this enables to, to simulate this problem which much smaller resources. Finally, we would like to show you some performance tests, which we perform on Archer. First, the so-called strong scaling. The strong scaling is done by increasing the number of processors with a constant problem. So we have one specific problem, one plus specific setup, and we increase the number of processors which we need, which we use to sol for solution of this problem. Ideally, the time required for the solution should uh, decrease linearly with the number of processors. Ideally, with two times as many CPU cores, we would want half the time required for the solution. Whether this will happen or not, 
depends on many factors, especially on the problems problem size, because the the larger the problem is, especially in when it comes to the size of the of the grid, it is usually easier to continue to scale well for larger number of, of CPUs. Our chosen problem is again derived from the Diplos building array, which we just have shown. And the domain is actually one half of, of the array, which was used in the previous case, but, but it, it's completely in the high resolution. So the grid has 56.6 million cells, which is still a moderate grid. And for simulating uh, whole cities, cities, we need more. But but uh, not. Uh, it's it's still a good approximation how a, an outer domain of a city square simulation might look like. The boundary conditions have turbulent. We have used a turbulent inflow generator to generate the whole inflow in the. Of the of the domain, and we have a freely boundary on the sides of the bound of, of the domain and on the top do, top top surface of the domains. We don't use any nesting in this in this uh, case, and the boundary conditions were selected for for this reason because in this case we use the it has the, the simplest configuration of the Poisson solver because all boundary conditions for the Poisson solver are the same in this case and the whole work in the Poisson solver is done in the third party library called PFFT which I introduced in previous slides. So this is the result of the strong scaling in this particular case. It may be difficult to uh, to identify the the lines in this figure. The top figure, the top line in each figure is always the total wall clock time used for the simulation. The line with open squares is the time taken by the Poisson solver itself, uh, on, only by the Poisson solver. And the, the final line with, with solid full squares is the difference of these two. So it is the time spent in, in the dynamic core of ELMM itself. As you can see on the left, in the pure MPI implementation of ELMM, the dynamic dynamical core of of ELMM scales very well and continues to scale even at the end of of uh, of the graph, even for 4,000 CPUs. But uh, the Poisson solver stops to scale around 1000 CPUs in this case. On the right hand figure, you can see the hybrid MPI OpenMP implementation. First, uh, no, you can notice that the, that the simulation takes more time and especially so because the, the Poisson solver, which was very fast in the pure MPI case is much slower in this hybrid case. On the other hand, at the at high number of CPUs, the Poisson solver still continues to increase its 
to decrease its runta its uh, time taken for the solution while it wasn't the case in the pure MPI. So now the question is why why the Poisson solver stops scaling so so early? It is not completely clear because most of the time is really spent in this library called PFFT, which calls the the FFTW library for fast Fourier transforms. And the author of this uh, library was before able to demonstrate sc scaling to much larger number of cores. It may be connected with the exact size of the domain or with the, with the configuration on, on a different computer. It's still not clear to us. Another test was the weak scaling. And this uh, weak scaling is done in the way that we keep the number of grid cells for each processors. And with increasing the number of processors used, we uh, increase the problem, the size of our problem. Doesn't mean that uh, the the one core has always the the same shape of the of the domain, but at least the number of size, uh, the number of cells. We use the same boundary conditions as in the previous case, and and on one Archer node, the domain had eight hundred and eighty six thousand of cells, and on two nodes it has two times as much, and so on. We must uh, we must uh, be aware of the fact that the fast Fourier transforms computational complexity grows with n times logarithm of n, where n is the number of of cells. So we cannot expect that that the solution time will be constant when we increase the number number of processes. Instead, the graph of the time taken by the Poisson solver should be linear. Still, it is not not completely linear, but uh, at least uh, close to it in, uh, for a smaller number of CPUs. Then it's it's uh, turning faster. If this code is flatter, this is it is better for us. That's the case of the hybrid implementation, at least in the in the first part of the graph. But again, you can notice that uh, for for one node, the Poisson solver is significantly slower for the hybrid case than for the for the pure MPI case. Especially in the pure MPI case, the time taken by the dynamical core of ELM itself is almost constant. And we would expect this to scale to much larger number of, of CPUs. So the, the bottleneck in this part is again the Poisson solver. We did, uh, in this case, we didn't try to to, decom to use just a 1D decomposition in of the FFT and to to and paralyze the other direction by OpenMP. This might avoid certain uh, expensive trans transpositions, but still the transpositions in the other direction would remain, so it is not clear whether it would significantly change the, the picture or not. Finally, we 
come to the conclusions of this talk. The capabilities of the code were uh, greatly enhanced and the code is now released as open source. The code is hosted as a Git repository on Bitbucket. The code was optimized, the, the serial performance also, the parallelization was optimized. We developed the one-way and two-way nest, grid nesting techniques, which allows us to have very large domains with coarse resolution, and we can concentrate in high resolution in certain important regions. We also implemented the turbulent inflow generation technique. It it has been it was already in the code, but we implemented its use usage on the nesting nesting boundaries to to generate the missing part of the spectrum from the outer domain, from the coarse domain. We still no, note the problems with the performance of the Poisson solver at high numbers of CPUs. It is not entirely clear why the underlying library doesn't scale that much as, as was demonstrated by the author of this library in some other cases. And it still will be investigated and uh, ELMM is easy to compile on Archer, can be easily downloaded, and the build scripts are aware of Archer specifics, just uh, certain arguments of the make commands must be, must be set. And that's the end of my talk. Thank you for your attention. We welcome any questions. Thank you very much for that. That was very interesting. Um, if anybody has any questions, please could they um, raise their click their hand and and uh, open their audio. No. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Um, I like to thank our speakers very much for what was a very interesting talk. It's always nice to hear what's actually going on with inside one of the ECIT projects. Um, and thank you all for joining and listening. But thank you again for your presentation and thank you for joining. Bye now. Thank you for, for the opportunity to present our work and also thank all the audience for, for listening to us and following the presentation. Excellent, thank you very much. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Goodbye.